As a widespread economic fallout of the coronavirus continues to impact the financial health of everyday Americans, many homeowners and renters find themselves in desperate need of help. By the start of May 2020, close to 4 million borrowers were already in either government or bank forbearance programs, choosing to delay their mortgage payments for at least 90 days. This number represents 7.3% of all active mortgages. This mortgage forbearance program, along with a moratorium on foreclosures and evictions, was all part of the 90-day Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, commonly referred to by its acronym CARES. Law offices are already indicating that they have a backlog of hundreds and possibly thousands of evictions ready to be filed when the states lift the restrictions on filing in August. And while some of the 35 million unemployed have regained employment, as the nation learns to work through the pandemic of the century, most unfortunately remain unemployed. Without a solution in sight, many who are already forced to live paycheck to paycheck, a pandemic that continues to linger, an economy hampered by border closures, and a continuing trade war, and partisan politics stymieing efforts to bring relief to a suffering populace, America faces a looming housing crisis that could leave millions homeless. Are we looking at a repeat of the 2008 housing crisis or worse, can we expect a wave of foreclosures with Christmas and New Year? Are you prepared or are you preparing for your own or someone you know who is homeless? Please consider subscribing to our newsletter to give you updates and membership specific content. Visit www.cityprepping.com forward slash newsletter or click on the link in the description and comment section below to subscribe today. Enjoy the video. In this video, we'll examine many of your options when faced with the threat of homelessness. Even if your house is completely paid off, disasters still sometimes can force you to leave your safe home. And even though you may be secure, your neighbor, friend, family member, or loved one may face a very real threat of homelessness. Many colleges identify major threats to student learning as shelter and food insecurity. Shelter insecurity is all around us and it isn't typically a few people panhandling or living under a bridge. It's hard for us to accept the possibility of our homelessness or the reality of homelessness for those that we know. Being homeless doesn't make a person a loser or a freeloader. Most people at some point in their lives suffer setbacks and may not have anyone in their life to turn to. There are options and things you should know should you or someone you know face a very real threat of homelessness. So let's look at what you need to know for yourself and others in this looming crisis. Number one, eviction options. Eviction culminates with the sheriff showing up at your door and forcing you to leave your premises. Before you or someone you know reaches this point, there are things that can be done. When the notice arrives, and in most states it must be posted on the premises and mailed as well, immediately begin exploring your options. Can you get into a new rental? Can you take on a roommate or two to reduce your costs and catch up in rent payments? Can you borrow from family or friends or move in with them? In some states, filing for bankruptcy may stop an eviction process, but only if it hasn't gotten too far in the process. Whatever you do, don't run from your problem or dismiss it and wait for the day that they come to put you out on the streets. If you start immediately, you may find several legal options to fight the eviction. There may be local government, religious, or nonprofit housing assistance or advocacy programs. Every day you gain brings you one step closer to getting back on your feet. Do your research the minute your housing becomes threatened. If you wait until the day that law enforcement comes to enforce a court order, you may find yourself on the streets with too many possessions to fit into your car, forced to live in your car, or in a local homeless shelter. Plan ahead to be prepared. Have these conversations with family and friends and let them know you're struggling. They may provide you with options or assistance. Number two, have a cell. In the weeks before the police show up to escort you off your property, have a cell of anything you won't be able to take with you. The TV, gaming system, bike, blender, coffee maker, and other possessions will no longer be as useful to you as your cash liquidity. Tell yourself you can get your possessions back again when you're on your feet, and you can. You'll probably not be able to raise enough to get caught up on rent, and you may not want to in order to pursue other options, but having the cash on hand can get you through moving safely in a new direction in life. If you have a mortgage, consider selling your home early while you still can and downsizing to a condo or townhome. Possibly risk the tax burden and hold on to the money and rent until things get better for you in the country. If you live in an area where housing prices are high but you're no longer tied to the area through unemployment, now might be the time to move to a different state where any equity can set you up in twice the house for half the cost of living. 
I'm not a financial consultant and I don't have a crystal ball to predict the housing market, but you'll want to weigh your finances carefully and consider the tax risk of buying a less expensive property, cash out investments, or borrowing against retirement funds. Just don't try and hold on to the old lifestyle. Your circumstances have changed and you need to rapidly redefine your surroundings. Sell possessions and property you don't need and prepare for the next chapter of your life. You may find that defaulting on your credit cards, declaring bankruptcy, or holding on to whatever money you have left is a better option than trying to hold on to a present life that is untenable. Number three, learn what you need to know. We take for granted how easily we can Google any answer to any question we may have, but what will you do when your cell service and internet service are gone? If you're facing a potential homeless situation, learn in advance what you will need to survive. In the days and weeks before you find yourself out on the streets, and really if there is even a remote chance you find yourself out in the cold, research and know where the shelters are in your area. Where are the food banks? What government, church, or nonprofit charity resources are available to you and your loved ones? There are several sites available to help you plan for the worst, and I'll put some of them in the description section below. Brush up on your camping and survival skills in case you are forced to find a location to camp for an extended period of time. Consider all your options for temporarily or permanently relocating. Maybe the city isn't the right place for you anymore, but your sister or cousin in the suburbs can let you live for a time at their house. If you are wrong and make it through a temporary setback without ending up homeless, you will be armed with knowledge you can use to help others in your community. Consider all your options and rate them from the best option to the worst option. Obviously, living in a tent or under a tarp is the absolute worst option, but maybe there are things in between that will allow you to buy enough time to get back on your feet. Make the efforts to write all your options down. Rate them from best to worst, then research each option so you have a range of possibilities and a broad knowledge of solutions and remedies for whichever circumstance you find yourself. Create a checklist of items you will need or still need. What are the items common to all options? Those are the ones you need to be able to take with you or acquire with whatever limited funds you have. If you have been prepping for a long time, you are probably well on your way. If you're new to prepping, you need to do some research. Explore the videos on this channel and find out what you need to know to survive other disasters where you may find yourself without a shelter. The more you know about what you face and how to overcome it, the more likely you are to make it through. Number four, keep your head about you. So much of survival is mental. It is easy to feel like a failure in life or ashamed of the circumstances you find yourself suffering through. You have to keep your head about you. Hopefully, this will be the worst thing you suffer through in your lifetime. But keeping positive by knowing that lives do turn around will keep you moving strongly in the right direction. In rough times, I try to remind myself that I'm not the first person to suffer through what I face. I remind myself that others have suffered more through the same or worse. And I remind myself that I don't suffer alone. In this looming housing crisis, there may be millions suffering along with you and also competing for available resources. Realize that your personal security needs are heightened when you don't have the passive protection of walls and fences. You will need to keep safe without the walls of a home protecting you. You will need to discover new ways to get food and water, to stay dry and protected from the elements. But your struggle will make you stronger and more resilient in the long run. Often we try and do everything right, but we find ourselves in trying times and troubling circumstances. We prepare for the worst we can think of and face even worse than what we can imagine. You will need to develop a mental toughness. Remember that your grandparents may have suffered through two world wars, a pandemic of their own and a great depression. They made it, raised children of their own who eventually brought you to where you are today. Throughout history, people have persevered through horrible tragedies and lived to see brighter days that they appreciate with greater gratitude. You can too. Don't lose heart. Don't lose faith. Develop the mental toughness to make it through the brighter days. Number five, know what you have to help others. If you're set and will make it through any housing crisis just fine, is there something you can do to help others? The sooner we can get people off the streets and back to work, the sooner we can recover as an economy. If homelessness is a possibility for you, what do you have that you will not be able to keep that might help others? Helping others is the way we help ourselves. Even if your help is not fiscal or a tangible good, giving of your time to help others can lift your spirits and your community up. It also helps you to see with clear eyes how bad things may actually be without relying on the media to tell the whole story. After any crisis, be they economic, natural, or man-made, we have to rebuild. We do that individually and together. Of course, you need to take care of yourself and the needs of your loved ones first, but sometimes we can spread what we have to others share what we have with others, and build a network that raises many people up. 
Prepping supplies we can't take with us and we can't sell may be able to help someone in more desperate need than we are. Know what you have in your physical, mental, and spiritual reserves to help and give to others. Together we rise and together we fall. Finally, know what others may be going through. As people struggle to find a safe place to stay, they may cross your path or pass through your community. Remember your compassionate heart and understand that sometimes, even if a person plays the cards perfectly right, life could have still dealt them a losing hand. It doesn't mean they're crazy or a loser, and maybe there is an opportunity for you to be the ray of light they need in their lives now. Maybe you can be the tiny ripple of hope they need to carry them through. With the CARES Act ending and no comprehensive plan on the horizon, with looming evictions waiting to be filed and mortgages remaining unpaid, America could be facing a housing crisis worse than what we endured in 2008. Thousands or hundreds of thousands may find themselves forced to live on the streets, migrating to secure opportunities or housing elsewhere, or simply struggling to hold on to their shelter security. If you find yourself possibly being one of those facing homelessness, don't delay or postpone your actions. Know your eviction options. Unload the things you will not need and increase your cash liquidity. Don't try to hold on so much of the present that you fail to plan a future. Learn what you need to know. Keep your head about you and keep your spirits up knowing that things will get better. And always look for opportunities to raise yourself up by helping others. Some do not have a network of family or friends they can rely on, and others are blessed to have such a network. Through any disaster, many suffer, and a homeless crisis is no different. If you enjoy this video, please click on the like button, share on social media, and as always, stay safe out there.